What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here, and we're back playing Minecraft with Redstone. This is part 10, and the first thing I want to show you is a zipper elevator. Now, this is a pretty nifty device. It, use, it utilizes a little trick with stairs, uh, and the whole idea with it is that since when you walk onto a stair, uh, you don't have to jump, you can just walk right onto it. It happens to be the case that if a pist piston pushes uh, a staircase at your feet, you'll automatically slide up on top of it, just like if it were shaped like a ramp, almost. That's what it seems like. Uh, yeah, so you don't, you don't have to jump or anything, and it just slides right underneath you. And with some clever piston timing, you can get sort of this zipper action going, with pistons on alternating sides, pushing at your feet, and the result will be being uh, propelled upwards to the top of whatever elevator you're working on. Now, um, like most things, I'm not going to give a demo on how to build this. This is actually a really simple design. It just takes a hell of a lot of repeaters and torches. Basically, most of the wiring is visible right back here. It's just bunches of repeaters and torches. Uh, the only actual redstone dust, I think, is underneath the ground in the front. But it's, it's a really simple design to make. It's got some torches up the side here. But the way it actually delivers power is each torch powers the piston in front of it and the block that's above it, which powers the piston above that one. So these these two pistons are going to activate as soon as that torch turns on. And essentially what you have on the back here, and there's a couple torches that you can't see that behind these blocks, uh, what you have is this cycle that sort of zigzags its way up to the top and then burns itself out when it gets to the top. Well, it doesn't burn out, it just re reaches the end of the line and the signal turns off. So you get this this sort of ripple effect going up the top. And I'll just run into it and show you what that looks like. Yeah, you see that? Did you see that? I don't know if that's going to be in the video or not. Sometimes it doesn't show up, but it looked like this, this whole portion here just never happened. The, vi the visual elements and the redstone elements, I've noticed, have not been playing. There it goes again! There it goes again! Yeah, I don't know what it is, but the visual elements of the game and the redstone elements of the game have not been playing nice together ever since uh, the 1.3 update made single player actually a multiplayer server with just one person. So I'm a little bit dubious about the zipper elevators. Uh, in the past, like in 1.2, they worked flawlessly, pretty much great, uh, unless you were on a server. And so now I'm. It's. No, oh, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. It's, it's sort of hit, really hit or miss now, and I, I think the problem must be that single player is now multiplayer. And oh, that's, that's when I made it. Cool. Now you might say, oh, well, whatever, if you don't make it the first time, you just try again, it doesn't take that long. Well, the problem is, if you really were using this to its full potential, it would be quite tall. There you go, two times in a row. Look at that. Uh, it would be quite tall, and so if, if it stalled out halfway up and you fell back down, you would probably die if you were in survival mode, because if you weigh more than 20 blocks. Okay, so the only other thing that isn't obvious from the way this design is put together uh, is this little stopping mechanism at the top. Basically, this is where the redstone line ends, is at, the, at this torch, and then it runs up here. Well, I guess it doesn't end. It ends with these pistons, but the top of the actual elevator ends with this torch. So once that flips on and those last two pistons go off out there, it also sends a signal around here, which has a delay on it, and then these pistons push, which again uh, has the opposite effect. Instead of pushing the stairs onto you, it pushes you onto the stairs. And so it, it takes you from these two stairs you're standing on and pushes you over here so that you don't fall right back down when the pistons retract. Look at that. Three times in a row. I'm proud of you, Zipper Elevator. That was way better than it was doing this morning. Oh, I should go back up there. There's something else I want to demonstrate. Yeah, it was this morning it wasn't working for me at all, so I don't know if it's about lag or processor timings or what, but it's a little bit unreliable in 1.3, it seems, and hopefully as they iron out the bugs that continue to persist in multiplayer, uh, that'll become an even better device. And it's really easy to build. It just takes... it's probably pretty expensive in terms of redstone, because you have to, you have to lay down a lot of redstone torches on the back. You have to remember that the recipe for a repeater takes two torches and a dust and three smooth stone, so they're pretty expensive to make. Uh, and then in terms of actual dust, there's only like eight pieces. But then every torch is a stick and a piece of dust. So this is loads of redstone dust on the back here. And then the uh, cost in pistons is pretty high too. Because there's a piece of redstone dust and a piece of iron in a piston. 
And then these are all stinky pistons. So you have to have, you have to have a slime ball for every single one. So for every block you want to go up, it costs you two iron and two slime balls. So pretty pretty costly for large elevators. But if you really honestly, these are these are all these redstone contraptions. Uh, and anything more more advanced than like an XOR for your lights is sort of lifestyles in the rich and famous as far as Minecraft is concerned. So you're probably not going to even bother building an elevator. Uh, if you can't afford it, you're just going to have a ladder. And then once you have enough redstone, you can put the elevator in. So it's really not that much of an obstacle. So the question now is, what about back down? Well, there are some zipper elevator designs that go back down, but I think they're kind of dumb because it's really easy to go down. You just jump down. The trick is not dying. Uh, so there are these things called water breaks, and I'll demonstrate one here. I'm going to go into survival mode. Ooh, this is a rare sight for this series. This is a water break, and you can see I just fell... I don't know how many blocks, actually. Let me check. Let's fly up there and see. It's about 30 or 40. Yeah, about 30 blocks, and didn't take any damage. Uh, I don't have any armor on. So, if this were uh, just a normal fall, that would be fatal. 30 blocks without any armor, you definitely would be dead. Uh, but with this water break, you don't you don't go splat. And basically, all it is is I'm running to the, the thing here. Uh, all it is is just water, and the trick is that you can hold it up with signs. Water won't flow past signs, and you can also put a sign on a sign, which is kind of weird. So if you stick a sign on a wall, you can put another sign on that sign, and it'll sort of float. Which is really strange, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So let's go back into creative. Yeah, so these signs are keeping the water from flowing out of here, and I've made this uh, two source blocks thick. If you just fill up the top, it only counts as one layer of water, pretty much, because the rest of it's flowing down, so it doesn't slow you as much. And I believe that with this de design, you can survive a fall from any conceivable height. And I'm going to go ahead and show that here. I'm going to try and get right in the middle here, and this is going to take a minute, but I'm going to fly us up to 256. That's where the height limit is now, right? It used to be 128, now it's 256. So if I go up to 256, that would be three blocks away from how far I actually would be falling, because the super flat world has three layers of grass on the bottom, or a layer of grass and two layers of dirt. So I'm going to go to go up to three. Look at this trippy effect here that happens with the textures on the ground. I don't know if this is Optifine or if this is in the game, but hopefully you can see that in the video. It's like zooming in and turning around, and I don't even know. Happens around 230 or so. Okay, we'll just go up to 265. That's pretty high. I'm going to turn off creative mode, and it looks like we're falling to the side. That's just because your character looks down when you're falling. Half of a heart uh, from that fall. And I think if you used three source blocks, you would take no damage. That's just a little bit of extrapolation on my part, but two, obviously, only half a heart is fine, because you're not going to want to fall that far all the time anyway. So there you go. You've got your ups, and you've got your downs. Now, I'm trying to think, I guess, how long are we going here? <coughs> I'll go ahead and show you guys the next thing in the gallery as well. I got one kind of a building spree the other day, so there's a few more things to show. This is a nine-digit combo lock. This is not a design I came up with. Uh, in fact, I don't think uh, only the final aspect of this is unique. Uh, and again, I'll reiterate the point that if it doesn't have an AP on it, it's it's a, it's something you can find in a, in another tutorial or on the wiki. It's out there already. It, I didn't make it up. And in fact, when I put an AP on on a sign to indicate, uh, it, what it indicates is not that I came up with the design or even that I came up with the idea, which is sometimes the case, but not always. Uh, what it means is that the actual layout and design that I used is different from the ones online. So if you're trying to build it, you should use my world save and not go looking somewhere else because you won't find it. Just try to make it convenient for you guys. So, um, nine digit combo lock. So, basically, what you have is a three by three array of buttons, and these represent your your numbers. So, across the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I even put a sign next to it for reference to help me remember. And then the idea is that this is this whole big circuit back here is connected up to a door or whatever, a vault, piston doors, anything that you can send a redstone signal to. Uh, and once you put in the right combo, it opens. So let's go ahead and do it. 7, 6, 5, 
really you can go as fast as you want as long as you wait for the button to come out. Uh, that's the only real limitation, I think. Four, and then listen after eight. God, that sounds awful. I don't know what I did wrong with those note blocks back there, but it sounds like crap. Either way, that's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to make the note blocks play. <laughs> it's just, excuse me for having zero musical talent, uh, in terms of note blocks at least. I made that one note block video, and every attempt since then has been a failure. <laughs> uh, Alright, so let me show you what's back here. This is, this is a lot of stuff, uh, and I'm going to take it piece by piece and make it hopefully easy to understand. In fact, I even put one of the components out here by itself so we can get a better look at it. So the first thing that you have to, the first challenge you have to overcome, and this is a pretty, this is a pretty cool uh, idea. This one came from uh, CNB Minecraft. This the way to get these buttons to not interfere with each other. And I'm not sure if he came up with it or not, but if he did, props to him because it's a damn good idea. I actually really impressed me. That's why I'm mentioning him, mentioning his name. Uh, and basically, what it is is a way to get uh, nine buttons to not interfere with each other. I'm falling in holes and shit. To not interfere with each other on the on the other side of a wall. So basically, where you have this these three by three torches here, these nine torches, those are on the backs of the blocks where the buttons are. So the first button for one is right here behind this torch, and there's two, and there's three, and so on. And all of this, uh, the first three blocks next to the wall here. And everything in red and all these repeaters, all they do is, uh, this is actually an optimized design. There's, there's one change here in the middle that'll be different from CNB, but there's a there's a change in his video for an annotation to get this, this exact design. So all these first three blocks do is keep these nine torches uh, from interfering with each other. So where you have a 3x3 three three input on the wall, it changes it into a 1x9 input on the ground. So everything is exactly uh, one one space apart and it's all on the same level so it's really easy to work with uh, the only weird thing about it is that it, you would you might look at it and think okay here's one there's two there's three there's four and so on but no it doesn't work out like that because you know one two three is over there and then four is back over here next to one so you think that four and one are probably gonna be next to each other uh, but they aren't <laughs> so it's kind of weird what, what, end up, what ends up happening so Here's where the numbers actually go. There's a, it goes two, six, three, nine, five, seven, one, four, eight. A little bit, a little bit silly. Uh, the ordering. So you have to, you have to. I actually put down these signs just so I wouldn't get confused about it. Uh, trying to keep it straight in my head. It was too hard. So uh, here's how it goes. I'll try and follow each line for you. The uh, here's the one. Where's the one sentence power? Basically straight out in front of it. This line doesn't reach anything below it. And it can affect it cannot affect this repeater since signals don't fall down onto repeaters. Uh, so it just only can affect this one piece of wire, which goes down here. And then even though it doesn't look like it, this wire is actually powering that repeater uh, because you cannot repower a repeater from the side. And the weird thing is that you can you can have a redstone signal fall down from a wire onto a repeater. That's, that's actually what's happening here. So you'll see the repeater turn off if I take that wire away. Uh, but you can't have it fall from a torch onto a repeater, so that's an interesting property we can use. Uh, and then again, there's the 4 here, is right next to a repeater, and it will send the power through, because it's, it's on the right side. This repeater is basically just looking in this block behind it, to see if there's power there. And when it finds a torch, sure enough, there is. So that power goes over here, and again, it doesn't look like it, but the signal's going down to this repeater, which goes into that one. So there's 4. And you can follow them all in the same way. 2 in the bottom there goes straight down, and then actually runs underneath over to here, and then the, the longest path is probably for number... Mm, that was actually 8 on the bottom there, excuse me. The middle the bottom is 8, and the uh, top middle is 2. So this is actually where 2 comes out. It's the top middle here, powers the block above it. You have to have a repeater here to keep them getting confused. And then it comes all the way down and comes to the far end here. So that's 1 through 9. And then the way that this works is, <coughs> once you push a button, it turns off the torch, which turns off the power to one of these lines. And so, uh, this array of, of repeaters gets it sent through these, the pink circuit here. So look at the pink bit next. And what basically happens here is you have a series of block repeaters. So you have block, repeaters, block, repeaters, blocks, repeaters, blocks, repeaters, all the way out into your last row of blocks. So this would, the number of blocks would be the number of digits in your, in your uh, secret code. So minus six, you see six rows of pink blocks. And the way it happens is, um, 
when you push a button, so I'm going to go push, try and push one we can see. I'm going to push one, and then when I fly back over, you'll see this redstone line right here is turning itself off. Okay, so what happens is when that line turns off, that whole line of repeaters running down this row, or I guess you call it a column, this whole column here, would be uh, depowered, because that's where the power is coming from, is from here to there to there. And it's crucial that every space in between here have repeaters, because uh, that's the only way you're going to get signals to not cross, and it's the only way to get the power to go into and through blocks like this. So once you, once you push that, uh, what was it, number one, uh, this whole row of torches turns on because the blocks are no longer getting power. So this power turns off, so the torches are allowed to come on. And then that's the same for any of the nine digits. So the way that you put your signal in is that uh, on the first row, you take off the torch uh, from, the, from the number that you want to be the first number. So if you see, okay, one, two, three, four from the end, that's my first number, my combination. And if you look, that's seven. Okay, so then the first thing in my combination should be, yeah, a seven. Great. So what this happens is, what happens is, uh, when the signal goes into the correct block, which is going to be this one I'm looking at here, uh, it, it, it falls down here to a wire that's waiting below. And the way this wire happens to be, I put it again on pink so you know it's the same circuit, it's instead of two blocks below, like most of this line is, it's only one block below. So the power from the other numbers can't reach this line. Only when you push seven does this repeater turn off, allowing the power to fall down. So it's kind of neat the way it all works out in the end. Come to think of it, it's a little bit weird, actually. The way, the way it actually works is that this repeater, there, put the block back in, this repeater powers this block and the signal falls down. So typically this signal is actually on, uh, but when we turn that repeater off, it turns the signal off. So that only happens when you push the right button, because otherwise, like I, like I showed you, the, uh, the, 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 the block with this, where the signal is being caught is in, a different, in, a, in, a, in the wrong place. So turning off this line would not affect it because this signal is not reaching down there. So when you turn off the right, when you push the right button, it turns off the correct repeater, and that turns off the line down there. Turning off that line depowers this torch, and it's the first step of our RS Norlatch array. So the way that this part goes down, it's the yellow and green part here, is that basically each of these lines has to be turned off, uh, at least for a little while, one after the other in order, in order for the output to finally turn on at the end. So let me jump out of here and show you in over here. This is the exact same thing, it's just less crowded. Uh, so the way that this works is, it's got a bunch of RS nor latches and a bunch of AND gates. So the AND gates are the magenta wool. Uh, they consist entirely of the, uh, the, the dust, the repeater, and the, and the block. And they're actually fairly compact because the input is these torches up here. So those are the AND gates. The RS nor latches are over here. So this block, uh, this block, torch, repeater, uh, line, block, torch, line, this circuit right here is an RS NOR latch, because when the power comes in here, it deactivates that torch, turning that off, turning that off, turning that off, turning that off, turning that on. And when you turn on this line, it turns off that torch, and it goes into this state. So it's an RS NOR latch, just a little different from the design that I showed you. This is just another way to build it. Uh, it does the exact same thing. It's two torches arguing over who gets to be on and who gets to be off. So whenever you push the first button, what you get is, and I've done it just like over there, uh, you de you're deactivating a torch, which deactivates a line, and then that line deactivating allows a redstone torch to turn on. So let's do it. Torch turns on, even for a second, sends power this away, turns that off, turns that off, da -da -da -da, goes around, until this is on. Now the cool thing is, uh, this only works for the first one, uh, you can just push the first one whenever, whenever you want, because you want the first number of your combination to always be ready to be taken in. But if you look at your second number, or your third number, there's something a little bit more complicated going on, because what you have is uh, an AND gate happening, and it's right down here. So basically, this... Uh, I'll show you farther down. So if I push the last button, what happens right now? Right now? Is it going to turn on that last RS NOR latch? 
You would hope not, otherwise you wouldn't have to have the combination. All you had to do is guess the last number. So the way that this happens is we have an AND gate here. And as long as... Uh, damn it, I'm falling off of shit. Get over here. The uh, These two torches are being ANDed through this redstone dust and that torch. So it looks a little bit funny, but it is an AND gate. When only, this, this torch... Or actually, it's a... Actually, you know, now that I think about it more, this is a NAND gate. Uh, the video I watched for this, the guy misspoke. This is actually a NAND gate. Uh, because when both of these are, are... Well, I guess it would be... Yeah, I guess it would be an AND gate if you looked at these two torches, but that's not where the power is coming from. It's coming from these. Anyway, so it's a NAND gate, uh, where these two torches... Uh, if either one of them is sending power here, it turns off this line. Uh, or this torch, which turns off this line, which turns off the power going into this bit here. It's this power that's keeping this torch suppressed, even when I push the button. So you, do you see what's going on there? So even when this line goes off, as long as that one's still on, this torch has nowhere to go. So what you have to do is turn off that torch. Okay, well, you turn off that torch by turning on this line, which you can accomplish by either turning on that, which I just showed you you can't do, or by turning on the one before it. Oh, and so then you realize, you know, principle of mathematical induction, in order to get this one to work, I have to have the one before it. So I have to start at the first one. <laughs> that's, this, that's, that's, what, that's what follows logically there. So once the first one is turned on, since it doesn't have an, an AND gate, or rather an AND gate coming in, uh, it just turns on like you want it to. But the second one, here you go, this line is on, turning off the torch, turning off the line, which allows the power here, allowed to be off. Now this is misleading. Uh, this line is getting power from this block, but it's not giving power to the block. The way that happens is, see this line's off, so the power's not coming from here. Power is not coming down from here because there's a block stopping it. So that means the power to this dust is coming from this repeater, which is powering that block. So you see when I push this second button now, having already pressed the first, they both go off because that one's just connected to this now. And looky there, the second latch turns on. And so in sequence we continue. The third one will work. The fifth one still doesn't work until I turn on the fourth one. And then finally, when I hit the fifth one, after hitting all previous ones, the output activates. Huzzah! Now the idea with a combination lock is that you don't want you don't you don't, you don't just want this to be this simple because this, all this all this would mean is that they have to push the right buttons and they have to hit them all in the right order, but they could hit anything else they wanted in between, and it would be fine. So, like, if the combination was one, two, three, and that's all you needed, and this is all you had, somebody could hood, could, could put seven, five, one, eight, four, two, six, seven, eight, nine, three, and then it would open because they hit one, two, three in that order at some point. So, what you want is whenever they push the wrong button, for it to start it all over, turn it all off, so you have a reset line. And that reset line gets activated whenever the wrong number is pushed. So let me show you where that is over here. It's the orange. So the orange is the reset bit. So think about what happens uh, back at the very beginning here once the power comes in. So say my first number is 7. It's down there. This is a 2 here on the end. So if I push a 2, eh, wrong, uh, it turns off the power here, and it turns on this torch. And just like all these other torches. So that's why you take the torch away on the correct number. So, yeah, it turns on this torch, which sends power up here. And this power, toodaloo, runs straight along and turns off the latch right here. And as soon as the, uh, and that's all you have to do. You don't have to connect up every line to each other. You just have to have connect each of them to the circuit down here. Because, well, actually, hmm. It may actually add some security to connect them up. I haven't thought about this yet, but I think that that would actually make it better. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. They're not going to reach all the way, but that's fine. Let's see, because I think, yeah, I would only turn on the ones, or would the AND gates take care of that? I'm not totally sure. Now that's a logical question I got to answer in my own time. Let's see. Um, okay, let's try it. Let's try it out. I want to put in the first three numbers. So let's clear it away first. I'll hit, a, I'll hit a, a three. There's no three in the combination. Seven, six, five. Okay, so now the first three 
are activated. Boom, boom, boom. So the AND gates have made it all the way down to here. That's cool. Now you see when I actually hit the 5, it turned back off the first latch because that was the wrong number. Uh, but because these AND gates were cycling down along the way, the, the signal still reached the third, the third gate here, which is what I want. So now I need to hit the next three numbers, and it'll go boom, 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 and then we go out the other side. So it's a little bit, a little bit funky there. But yeah, I don't think that. So okay, so what, I'm, what my question is now is, if I hit the wrong number now, does it reset everything? But or if I hit the, let's say, let's say I hit the second number again. What's the second number again? And then what you would want is for it to clear everything. Let me see if it does that. It does. Okay, I think I think that's the AND gates taking care of that. Then I think you're I think you say so you don't you don't have to connect these up. The NAND gates down here will take care of uh, clearing the whole circuit whenever any bad number comes in. Anyway, let me follow my logic from before. This two is the wrong number. It lets it lets it lets a torch turn on, which sends signal up here, which runs around down here, turning off that torch, turning off that line, turning on this torch, which powers here, turning off this torch. So you see now everything's off here. Uh, so that's it's already off, but if it were on, it would be turned off by this torch turning on and deactivating it, which would clear the entire circuit, just like we showed. So then, the only question is, what happens when you actually get it all right? 7, 6, 5, 2, 4, and then 8. Ding! <laughs> Okay, the signal turns on out here. This is the final end. This is the whole end of the circuit. It reaches these blue out output lines. And then I have a pulse shortener here because uh, I don't want to leave these note, note blocks. Basically, the way I have the note blocks wired up is they're hanging out near these torches. So whenever, whenever the torches go from off to on, they play. Uh, so that's why I have the pulse being shortened. That's all this does is it shortens the pulse. Uh, the signal here only lasts long enough uh, that this repeater, uh, this repeater hangs onto the signal for just long enough that the piston extends, and then it gets a little bit of a pulse, and then the, this, this repeater turns itself off. Or rather, this other side turns itself off. So let me, let me show you what actually is going on there. Let me clear the circuit. This is the last step, and it's not, not a complicated one. Clear the circuit out, I'll hit the wrong number. So here's the usual state. So what happens is, the this signal turns on, I actually said it backwards a second ago, this signal turns on, and it runs to here. And boom, power goes through. Power to this block, power runs through there. So now the signal's on, the signal's on. Uh, and then there's four ticks here. There's four ticks here. And then it runs over here. One tick, turn off the torch. And when the torch turns off, the block pulls away. And so this is about an eight tick, or uh, a seven tick pulse, I think. Eight, seven or eight tick pulse uh, through here. So it's not very long, a couple seconds. And then it turns itself back off, which is what I want, because when the, when the signal goes from off, to on, let me just cheat here. Here we go. It plays the signals, or it plays the little notes. So awesome. So this isn't this isn't too complicated to build. If you're going to do it in com by components, that's really the only way to do it. I would suggest different colors of wool. Try and keep it all straight in your head, and then check your design for your RS Snorlatch array over here. Because this is a pretty cool design here, and. Uh, this is neat. This is actually not the design. It's, or it's, it's edited from the design I got from that video. So it's a little bit different. It actually it actually works, unlike the one in the video. So it's nice. And then out here, you have just a, whatever output you want. So where I have the note blocks, you could send the signal to a door, and it'll open the door. And if you don't put a pulse shortener on it, it'll just keep the door open forever. And then what you need to have is a button somewhere inside that activates your reset line. But that's really easy to do. Uh, just wire it up however you like there. All right, so that's all for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to show you what the hell is going on with this thing. This is, you see how much space this one took. This is the biggest thing I've built so far, and this is actually uh, a lot of it's my design, so I'm looking forward to showing it off to you guys. So that's coming up next time. It's actually a, an improved input for a seven-segment display, so we're going to see all kinds of cool numbers here next time. All righty then. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys then.